sifter.com.au. Hi, I'm Fiona Bartholomew. And I'm Gianni Di Giovanni. Welcome to Walkthrough, Sifter's weekly recap on the biggest news in video games. This week, the Activision Blizzard Microsoft deal is blocked in the UK, Armored Core 6 gets a release date, and Sega workers vote to unionize. Here is the news for Sunday, 30th of April. Let's go. Join the Sifter community on Discord at sifter.com.au forward slash Discord. The UK's Competition and Markets Authority has decided to block Microsoft's bid to acquire Activision Blizzard, and it mostly comes down to Google Stadia. You may be thinking, hang on, what? The review of the deal by the CMA started in September last year and found three main points of opposition to the $69 billion merger. It didn't sufficiently cover different cloud gaming service business models. It wasn't sufficiently open to providers who might wish to offer versions of games on PC operating systems other than Windows. And it would standardize the terms and conditions on which games are available. Basically, Microsoft would have so much power, their contracts would become the default format. With Stadia gone, that means Microsoft is out on their own for streaming games, and that's a problem. Activision Blizzard will appeal the decision with CEO Bobby Kotick saying in an interview with Bloomberg TV that cloud gaming wasn't a big deal. It clearly is an irrational conclusion. And... I think uh, we have every expectation, as does Microsoft, that we should prevail in an appeal with, uh, with the tribunal. Cloud gaming is an inconsequential part of the business. And having done this for 35 years, it's my view that over the course of the next decade, what you're going to see is phones having greater power, greater capability, better graphics, a faster ability to broadcast to a large screen. And so, you know, the idea that somehow you're protecting all of these big foreign competitors um, from market competition, it it made, made no sense. And I think that Microsoft really went out on a limb to provide remedies that would ensure that anyone that had an aspiration to participate in cloud gaming would be able to do so. Let's see what happens in the weeks to come. Good news, mech heads. We got a release date for Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon this week. It's been 10 years since From Software put out a new game in this series, and you'll be able to play the next entry on the 25th of August on last and current gen Xbox and PlayStation, as well as PC. There's a new gameplay trailer released as well with some over-the-top action with FromSoft promising their signature action gameplay. There are standard and collector's editions available, but if you want to go all out and spend a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X worth of money, you can pick up the almost $900 premium edition with its own model mech. The price of Asus's ROG Ally has leaked and it looks like it might be cheaper than we thought. A Twitter user called Snoop Tech claims it will be $699 US dollars for the top tier model with an AMD Z1 Extreme chip, which works out to be a little over a thousand in dollary dues. With specs out in the wild now, it looks like the Ally will be a much more powerful device than its nearest competitor, the Steam Deck. We'll know more on the official launch on the 11th of May, where we'll see how close they can compete on price. One of the biggest advantages this handheld has for Australians is actually being available for sale. Sorry, Valve. Workers at Sega of America have filed a union vote with the National Labor Relations Board. It'll be called the Allied Employees Guild Improving Sega or Aegis, which will be the partner of Communications Workers of America Union. Unions work a little differently in the US than they do in Australia, but each company has to apply, then vote before the union is recognized, and that covers each workplace separately. If it goes through, the 144 members at Sega, including QA, localization, live service, marketing, and product development, will become one of the largest video game unions in the US. While you wait for any news on Hollow Knight Silksong, a group of dedicated mods have completed a project called Hello Nest Vocalize, adding voice acting to the entirety of the first game. The fan-made project involved over 100 voice actors from the Hollow Knight community who provided voices for spirits, law tablets, bosses, NPCs, corpses, items, journal entries, and enemies. To play this mod, you'll need to own a copy of Hollow Knight on PC and download the Scarab Mod Launcher, then search for Hollow Nest Vocalize. If you want to check out this very impressive passion project, we've posted a link to the trailer in the show notes. 
And while you're online, if you want to dig way back in the Sifter archives, you can find an interview with Team Cherry from 2016. It's an interesting insight into how the team was feeling before the launch, and you'll also find a link to that in the show notes. That's it for the big headlines. It's a smaller what's coming out this week. Out Tuesday is Age of Wonders 4. Customize your faction, explore dynamic events, and engage in battle. In the latest entry in the turn-based strategy series, it arrived on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and S on the 2nd of May. Also out on the 2nd is Redfall, the brand new IP by Arcane Studios. Fight back against vampires in the besieged town of Redfall in this Left 4 Dead style shooter. Play solo or team up with up to four players, choosing from diverse heroes with unique abilities. That's coming to PC and Xbox Series X. Ravenlock is a fantasy action game from developers Coco Cucumber about a girl who falls into a magical mirror and must fight and defeat the evil Caterpillar Queen in third person action. It'll be out on PC and Xbox on the 4th. Articles to read, videos to watch, and podcasts to listen to. Sifter.com.au This has been Walkthrough by Sifter. My name is Fiona Bartholomew. And my name is Gianni DiGiovanni. Thank you so much for listening. We know you love our podcast, so why not become a monthly backer on Ko-Fi? Your support lets us keep making our shows, so why not show the love and sign up to be a monthly backer? It's easy. Head to sifter.com.au forward slash support, where support starts from just $1 a month. That address again is sifter.com.au forward slash support. Sifter is produced by Fiona Bartholomew, Kyle Paletto, Daniel Ang, and Adam Christou. Mitch Lowe is senior producer who edited this episode. And my name is Gianni DiGiovanni, and I'm the executive producer. Thanks to Brian Fairbanks from Salty Dog Sounds for composing the walkthrough theme tune. And thanks to both Audio Technica Australia and Omni Studio for their support of Sifter's three podcasts. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back with more news next Sunday. Sunday.